lying down sleeping. And then I woke up and I told Mrs. I said, babes, something's not right. She said, what's it mean? I'm paralysed. Shut up, Paul. Don't let I've said this. Babes, all I could do is move my head. Wow. Here we are. We're here, man. We're, we're here. It's not, I'm buzzing, you know. This one's going to be really interesting. Really interesting. Really, it's really interesting, it's another Chelsea pod. Uh, we're changing uh, our name, guys, to no, the man, Best of Chelsea know, podcast. Cause mate, mate, it's starting to annoy me. People have come up to me being like, oh, so this is not the Bevs of Ballers, it's the Chelsea podcast. <laughs> I'm, like, mate, I'm getting outgunned right now, man. I'm you are, right you now, are. I'm going to have to get some goodies on there. I'm slowly warming up to the, the blue side of things. I'm way. lying. <laughs> See, bro, I know, I, know, I knew I'd, I'd, I'd get you in the end. Yeah? Yeah, it was a trap, innit? It was a trap. It was all a ploy. <laughs> it was all a ploy. I knew it. <laughs> What's been good with you, man? I've been all right, man. Um, final back year uni? uni. Back at uni. Final year now, final so year just trying uni. to get that. I'm done now. I've got, yeah, I've got my man. graduation in like... December, innit? Start of December, yeah. Yeah, man. How's, how's, how's it feel being done? Good. Yeah. Good, mate. I'm so glad. It's so scary. Like, when you finish university, it's like um, you've got like the, the rest of your life open. Yeah. It's like, it's like you've, you've got a diary and like education... From from zero mm. to to twenty twenty one, that's that's your diary is full. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then after and then that is after like, what that do you do next, empty, isn't it? Empty. Mm. So, bro, you 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 literally just got like you know one last year of it now, isn't it? Mate, exactly, bro. You know, you just got to follow your passion as well, and that's why we're here. That's why we're here. That's why we're on the number one sports podcast in the world. Yeah, man. Um. So so yeah, we, no, we got a bit. We got the bevs out today, guys. Oh, we got you know the bevs what? out today, guys. Guys, we've 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 kind of fooled you in a way. We, we haven't have. had one bev or one bully yet. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first time. Yeah, this I, is the first I, time. I legit thought that we, we that we were gonna get some stick. I'm like, oh my god, you didn't have a bev with Eddie. Yeah, no one said anything yet. In this, but obviously we were at Chelsea training ground, so we couldn't. It yeah. literally be so. Ironic. Yeah. To literally just be sipping alcohol. I was with yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Literally the, the worst place to pull out a bed <laughs> like for Tammy real. walking past. But how come these guys are down <laughs> <the bed? laughs> Get me a bud like quickly. Like, can you imagine? Well, mate, um, I will say I will say cheers to you, my oh, friend. Let's have a quick cheers for sure. Cheers to you. We, we are we are drinking... Um, we got the Bud Light out. Alex's bud Light favorite. today. See, I get a lot of stick for this beer. And I, I, I think it's, it's, it's undue stick because <laughs> it's, it is a tasty beer. It's nice, you know. I'm... I'm a bit of a strong boy fan though. You're strong boy. Yeah, strong Pete, boy I think that's even worse. You so? cider? Ah, mate, I'm not a cider fan. Goes down well, man. Yeah, but it makes you bloated, bro. Good metabolism. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right still. Nah, man. No, it's a light beer. It's a light beer. It is, it is, it is. Hence the name. I would sip it. So. Hey, 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 Bud Light, if, if you want to sponsor <laughs> us, then I'm trying to do a quick plug. <laughs> <laughs> On that though, <laughs> I think it's time to beer. introduce <laughs> the guest, innit? <laughs> Let's go into it. We introduce our that. guest today, a very special guest we got for you guys today. Ooh. He was the first black player to grace the field for Chelsea FC. He's also got an award-winning autobiography titled Black and Blue, detailing the amazing life journey that he's, he's gone through. His story's been very inspirational to me personally as well, and it's a pleasure to have him on the show today. So we'd like to welcome Paul Cannaville for you guys. Paul, how you doing, man? <laughs> From that introduction, my friend, I was uh, nearly going to sleep, but no. Uh, 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 I'm oh, being shy. It. I'm not Fools, being shy. Fools going the hamster. Words are going, no, no, no. I won't hammer you yet. Just <laughs> yet. But um, yeah, thank you for inviting me. Um, guys, guys, well. if you would have seen Paul's face when we walked into his front room today, you would have. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, we've, we've got like a team of what? Five, six, seven people like yeah, with us today. Man. We got, we got lighting. We got kit. And Paul was like, what the hell? You know what? That that is information communication with Kyle. I'll <laughs> yeah. oh, producer at, Kyle's getting at, drawn at up. The Send the complaints to the office right away after this. <laughs> all right, Kyle, but your job's on the line. But it's all right good. Now. It's all good. <laughs> You're Love getting sacked in the morning. <laughs> 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 You're not really. <laughs> um, but no, but honestly, mm. it's a, it, 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 it is amazing to have you on the show. You know, as a as a as a as a Chelsea fan, it really is an honor. You. you really are a legend of the club so yeah. and and your life story is you know it's um i think so many people 
can learn from your story and, yeah. and take so much value with with the journey that you've you've been from and the experiences that you've had. Um, and this is why this this is, this is one of the reasons why we started the podcast. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. you know it's the podcast is such a great medium. To, to to convey these stories to, to sports fans who might not otherwise be exposed to these kind of stories and hear these kind of experiences. So, you know, we 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 we, we want to be that 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 almost like vessel for yeah. for fans to, to hear these stories. So um no th- honestly thanks for coming on the show. It's a pleasure man. You know what I'm wondering but I'm gonna ask first. Go on. Whose ideas was it for these mics? They're damn heavy, my friend. Oh, man, what? it was mine. I've got to hold this mic, and I'm feeling my <laughs> wrist guy like, Jesus, do something. Anyway, that wasn't right. That wasn't right. Sorry, take that off. But anyway, um, you know what? Thanks for coming. Don't get me wrong, and I it's keep hearing that um, same scenario. Well, not scenario, but I um, was talking about it the other day, to be honest. I'm mm. um, blessed, if, we, if, if, if you can call it like that, that I have my journey has been the whirlpool. Um, been up and down, yeah. spiraled, and I've come through it. Um, um, with that, the resilience is what we call it by. Um, yeah. Get myself up, get, get myself a kick in the ass, as well as others have been doing that for me and family members. That I've come through um, quite a few yeah. obstacles, um, but I'm here still, and um, it's great to give back. I know that he, everybody hears that. You really have to love your, what you're doing. And I really have found myself right now from after football. Cause don't get me wrong. Um, for me to leave, not even leave to finish in the game as, as early as I did. I was in my prime at the age of 25. And yeah, yeah to have that injury, um, I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah. I, I really thought that I could continue, continue playing. And to be told, um, Paul, we won't renew, renew your contract. That was difficult itself. How 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 was that feeling? Obviously, twenty five. Um, football being your love, mm. and um, reading a bit about your story as well, knowing that um, at a young age there was a few like problems going through. And football was kind of your escape, innit? it? Football was definitely my escape. Um, obviously, a Caribbean background. With my mum coming from the Windrush era. Yeah, yeah. And she came across to be a nurse. To be honest, at the age of sixteen, which I thought was wow. just brave enough itself. And you're leaving your your family members, your brothers and sisters, and coming all the way. To England, obviously being invited to build a new England, mm. um, and to be a nurse. And um, the say she went, she met my dad at the time, and it was like uh, I think before that she actually couldn't actually go and be take the courses for the nurses course. She had to be eighteen, okay, obviously yeah, being yeah, underage. Yeah. She had to wait for another two years, and by that time she met my old man, um, and obviously she had me and my sister. Um, so that changed a lot of things for her, obviously. So now you don't realise it until then, but that was the late sixties, early sixties. Um, dad had left after a year, so his mum bringing up two kids. That time was difficult yeah, itself. I imagine, man. You must have heard those stories if you haven't. Yeah, boy, trust me. And you, as a kid, don't realise that you just want to see and you want to see. Sure, you want. And if you want, and your mum ain't giving to you, you think, oh, you're no good, and you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to realise that when it was difficult for her. Yeah. Definitely. 100%. I mean, what was it What was it like when you were starting out your journey in football? Um, A journey. Everything for me was football. Um, She wanted me to catch her education. And I thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll go to school. Like, yeah, yeah. But everything that, for <laughs> me was that, yeah. <laughs> Was yeah. PE teachers. That it's funny that they saw the talent in me. Both of my PE teachers, every yeah. Yeah. PE teacher saw the talent in me. So I was in that j- the gym doing extra. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, even yeah. when it was playtime, they said, "No, come out, come back, offer the playground just in case I get any trouble." You're in the gym. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I was just, you know, what I mean? basketball, cricket. I was in all the time. Wow. Um. And good at every sport. It was something I was good at every sport. So um, I think it was just so difficult at that time to just concentrate on education. I, there was nothing yeah. more I could concentrate with. It was English. Nah, I don't like English. <laughs> Maths. 
I don't mind counting, but decimals get the. That's, that's <laughs> you know what I mean? Bow, all that fractions and what yeah, they do there. Do you know? Am I going to use that? Literally, I say that all the time. Yeah, Pythagoras. Who's using that? I've never seen Pythagoras since you're So I don't know. I mean, it was just football from the age of five. To be honest, it took play. For me, it was. And it's funny I mentioned it because I was watching um, football on the telly, and at that time I was supporting Leeds United. Yes, I was. I <laughs> know uh, that wasn't wasn't didn't go down too well um, at the bridge, but you know what? Everything changed after that. And we was watching obviously a black and white TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back then, boys, you were known this. You had to put a fifty pence coin in this box, which was at the back of the telly. Every time it ran out, you could just Whoa. imagine the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! What's your <laughs> no Give it up. way, really? Seriously, big time, bet. Oh man. my day! So, and that's that was a rented TV. You don't know, lumped wow. rented TV, but you had to push in money to punch it to restart it every time. That's nice. But I was watching Leeds United. They was playing obviously in white shirt, and I don't know why I took fancy to them, man. The way they played football, Remy and Clark, yeah. Billy Bremner. And they are amazing back in the day, weren't they? they were. I'm glad you said that because many people don't realise that. They were the oh, two. Yeah, <laughs> no, they were huge. No, these were big they were up there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think that was my take on football. Um, and I just knew from there I, I wanted to be a professional. Yeah. Simple as. Yeah. And obviously passing that information to your mum. She's got diff- <laughs> different ideas. That's what you think. <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. Mm. You know what I mean? But she wants me to be a policeman or a, a doctor. Doctor, lawyer, in it? Policeman. <laughs> you, know? you know what I mean? Stay out of trouble, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. When, when you're so so passionate about something, there's mm. there's there's only one destination, isn't there? Because you just constantly Definitely. drive every single day. Is Every time. And I don't think she realised that at all. She yeah. really didn't see a sport as uh, a job or a career. She didn't see that at the time. Um, whereas, probably I didn't. I just know I wanted to be a professional footballer. What came after that, I yeah. don't know. Um, as I grew up, that's all I was doing, really. Um, don't get me wrong, I was getting myself in trouble f- with the wrong guy. Obviously, I didn't have that father figure around, which was difficult. And I, at times, I really did need that that mentor. Uh, yeah. man, you know what I mean? Father figure. Yeah. And... As much as I love my mum, we never had that kind of relationship um, as such growing up. It's like your day went and you want to talk about it. We never talked about it. Mm. So I was just went in my room. It was like... It was just it, that, and that built it. up yeah. inside of you oh, as well. Does. And you don't speak and that makes things ten times does, worse. It does. And you d- obviously don't realise that when you're young. You think, oh, can't be bothered. So you're, what? you're in your room opportunity to go out you're asked if you're not started sneaking out you know yeah, how it yeah, goes yeah, yeah. and that's what I did and obviously when you're following the wrong crowd and I remember myself I was the youngest I had these older boys and um, to be honest I had to respect them because they knew that I had the talent and half of the time they kept me away yeah. oh, you ain't gonna believe it I said look I'm gonna go come on we're gonna now Paul you'll get yourself in trouble stay away I was like what? And I couldn't believe they were saying that. And I, I, and I mean, me wanting to go, wanting yeah. to go. I said, no, 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 you are good at football. You can go far. Mm-mm. Don't get yourself in trouble. And they were doing this. Wow. So, that's that's um, testament to how much talent well, was on show. Isn't trust it? me. And it was only me being ignorant and forcing myself to go at this one occasion. And, and when I went, who gets caught? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and that was the experience. I never want to come across again. It was I done a burglary. Yeah, stupid at the age of 13, 14 and um, got caught as I said. And it was like bam, straight into Nick and um, went to court. And the guy didn't have mercy. He sent me down four months detention. Wow. Yeah. And um, brother, it was like this locked up. I was like, no nah, man, I love my freedom. Mm. I can't do this. Did it? Did it? Did it change you? But it did it change me. Don't get me wrong, I learned things in there. Yeah. Um, but it was just the discipline which I probably needed. And it came out, my head was already thinking, uh, I have to take up my football serious. Yeah. And it was only a case because um I went in there and I joined the team, um, the football team. Um, age of sixteen, so you can imagine I joined the football team that was in there. And uh the guys, the Sunday, because what it was, you had a team and the team that would come in, that was allowed in to the centre, well, so I say centre, detention centre, um, they were old enough, big men, and 
I played in, I played up front and we won 10 nil. I scored nine. And it was like, Flipping it, mate. you got the screw there telling you, so boy, you're good. Yeah. I mean, you're really good. Why don't you play for Chelsea? And this time, who? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't click on. <laughs> didn't click on. But um, that was it. It was like, you know what? I just want to get out of here. I used to write letters to my manager. He said, oh, manager, get me out, man. Just just get me out. And like, I did behave. And um, they let me out early. And that's when my manager came because he, he didn't realise I'd gone out. And I went back to my mum's, Danny Slough, and... You know, we find myself a job and I started to play for a non-league, which we called back then was semi-pro. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that time, Southern League was a big thing of the grassroots football, yeah. trust me. Um, 16, 17 years old, I was at Hilling and Borough. And you're talking about the likes of training Tuesdays and Thursdays, you know what I mean, and playing on Saturday and you're getting a weekly wage. And you're 17 years old. You it takes from the big leagues, isn't different. it? Yeah, this is something different, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? Because a young boy like myself, if you wasn't working, it was gyro. You know that unemployment. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. but if you was working, that was an extra money for you. You know what I mean? So, it was. Don't get me wrong. I was good. I was in the youth team, and before I knew it, I, I've, I'm out of the youth team and I'm in the first team. And I was like, what? And so there was a cup game that I wanted to play in this youth team. I knew if we if I played, we're going to win it. And they refused to no, 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 you ain't playing in that. And I was like, what? But you got to understand the trouble that got he, my manager got, um, Colin Barnes, because Colin Barnes knew me, and he cast me to come back to um, Hillenden. And right away, he's put me straight into the youth team. And the parents went mad, ballistic. They said, hold on, he's just come in, like, How's he got How's he, yeah, yeah, How's yeah, he done yeah. this? He's just said straight to them, mate, he's he's that good. And if you don't like it, you know where it go. He told them straight. Oh, wow. So I had to respect him for that, trust me, because it started from there. And yeah, yeah. The manager, first team manager, I think it was Alan Batchwoods. And um, so you can imagine a 17 year old, he's in, in the first team. I'm like, wow, traveling away and to, you know what I mean? Hendon, well, not Hendon, Hastings and Dover and all those yeah, places. Yeah, Never man. travelled like that. You Different know what experience, I mean? isn't it? Like? Yeah, it was in the youngster. Seriously, was. I mean, I didn't have their boots. And I was t- it's funny how you got bringing this up to me because the boots I had, you know, do you remember Woolworths? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Woolworths, <laughs> what a shot. What bring a it shot. back. You bring that thing. Right now, Anybody's man. hearing there, you know what Woolworths. If you don't know what Woolworths brought you back then, those days it had Everything unbelievable, unbelievable. So, my mum bought the boots, Winfield boots, yeah, soccer boots, and it was a case. Trust me, I had to clean these boots. And the story you'll hear the story about I had to clean them if I was allowed to play football. If I didn't Rawr. clean them, I wouldn't be able to because you know, if you leave them, they dry up, start smelling, smelling like yeah, break up. Yeah, so man. I had to wash them every time. So, I was playing in those boots, and man just saw me and he said, Look, meet me Thursday before training down West Drayton. Met him, and it was down Perryville, and we went down to Steve Perryman Sports Shop. If you remember me back in the day, he had yeah. Steve Perryman, and I went in there, and he just said, "Yeah, pick yourself a pair of boots." And I went, "What? Oh, oh my god!" And I was like, "What?" And nobody's ever said that. And I'm thinking, I mean, pick yourself boots. I'm thinking, no, I can't be too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let me get these boots over here. And he took these boots over there, and he said, "What are you doing?" I said, "What? What? I've got the boots." He said, pick yourself some quality boots. Right. And let me tell you something. Them boots back then, you're talking about 1970, 62, 70, yeah, 79. It, £70, pound, £80, pound, these boots were expensive. Right? That was a lot of money. Oh, and I'm gosh. looking at Adidas, and I'm looking at Patrick's, and I'm looking <laughs> at, damn. <laughs> but my boots for that, I got, there was um, the Puma Kings. Yeah. Okay, quality yeah, yeah, boots, yeah. mate. Quality Ooh. boots. Yeah. That's money, brother. <laughs> I took, trust me, I f- when I felt the level on that. You're like, like, this is real. This is, this yeah, is this is real it. boots. And I took it to him. He said, yeah. You sure? I said, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was telling him to take him back. I said, you sure? He said, yeah. I took him there. 79 pounds. I was like, wow, damn. man. Trust me, did I look after them? So yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah. was in my bag. Training Tuesday, training Thursday, playing a match, but yeah, um, grassroots. I was learning, but I was good. 
Yeah, man. But I was taking some serious tackles. So if you can't take tackles in that kind of league, you are not ready for Premier or yeah, professional football. Yeah, yeah. That's Physical. How I saw it. Yeah. And I was taking tackles. So um, I feel like over the years now, getting a learning from the younger boys who are just the same way, just coming out of professional football and was retiring and playing on league day. Yeah. It was giving me enough experience. Um, and so it went on from there. And after that, I went to a few clubs on trials. I went to West Brom. I went to um, Southampton. Laurie McMillamy was the manager yeah. there. They had the Wallace brothers, Jordan there, Lawrence. I went to Wimbledon. It's funny, I went to Wimbledon. And right away, two days, I said, yeah, we want to sign you. Right. So went, <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to give you £15 a week. £15 <laughs> a week? I get more on a gyro. <laughs> I don't think so. So No, 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 no. Try to bump you, innit? Oh, I don't know if they're bump me, but like, boy, I just thought, nah, something's not right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought, nah, don't, don't be so fast. So going over the clubs, and it's funny what back then, they more or less didn't say nothing to you. Mm. You know what I mean? Whether you was good or not. Or not. Yeah. And you just left think, well, it must be not good enough. Nobody said nothing. Yeah. Going back on. So after being a week there, you go back to Hilton and nobody said nothing. Went to Westmont, nobody said nothing. Went to Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. I remember Ron Stewart was the chief scout then. And um, I was there and I saw all these pros and I was like, oh my God, I just Next saw him. level, yeah. yeah. I just cool. saw him on the box. Mickey Joy. And then Clive Walker. <laughs> so I'm there like running down, warming up, doing your training. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, you're doing what they go over. I thought, oh, this is good. But right now, I can't do nothing wrong, man. Just make it easy. Take it easy. Take it. And like I was getting the ball and giving it back. Getting the ball. Yeah, giving it back. Making it look good. Like if I Drop the shoulder. Yeah, Give yeah, it yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah, making it look good. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all done it. <laughs> no, We've all done it. Yeah. <laughs> Just making it look good. But, yeah, um, a bit of style there, man. That was the week, mm. played game, nobody said nothing, same thing, went back to my club. And I thought, you know what, so I'm obviously not good enough. Yeah. Um, a week went past, I believe Ron Stewart come back. He said, what's wrong? I said, well, nobody said nothing. He said, no, we are interested, come back again. So I came back that week. And mm. you see, I you got to understand, I didn't know what was going on, obviously, between the club's negotiations were going on and so forth, but you, you're not unaware, so... Um, Went back that week, and it's funny because um, the late Ray Wilkins, um, mm. brother Graham Wilkins, yeah. was there, he was right back, and he just stopped me. He said, Kenneth, what are you doing? I said, what? He said, they never came to see that, mate. He said, take me on. Swear and no. Yeah, and I was like, oh, you sure, man? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I can do, but are you sure? He said, no, take me on. And trust me, I got the ball, and I dropped the shoulder, <laughs> gone. And it just came natural, boom, 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 yeah, everywhere. Yeah. I just got the ball, it was gone. Wow. And um, it's from that day, Friday. I remember itself because I was kind of, um, manager wants to see, and I thought, this is it. I said, boy, tell me so, yes or no. And like, yeah, boy, yeah. I was nervous as hell. I went in there, and it was John the late John Neal, rest in peace. And I was standing there, I can remember distinctly, I was standing there. And this is me giving me my Welsh accent. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> aye, we like you, <laughs> and we're gonna sign you up for seven months, the remaining, and we we'll see what you can do. I said, aye, and I went, yeah, trust me, seven months God signed as a perf pro. Oh my god! Went outside, I just went on the phone. I said, I've done it, I've done it, you've done it, you've made it. Oh, yeah, mad. that was you know my sister, she was support. Yeah, my mates. And um, obviously, I had to let my mum know, but she <laughs> did. my mum's very funny, you know, because she's a very disciplined person. I, I know mm-hmm. she loves me. Yeah. But, like, something of excitement, I tell your mum, mum, I've done it. Done what? <laughs> I'm a professional at Chelsea. <laughs> I got it on my dream. So what? <laughs> oh, my, really? That's how it went. Wow. End of the phone. It's like, yeah, thanks, mum. Well, thanks, mum. I'm going to cheers. Wow. <laughs> but she had hit that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you did you believe that you would make it? Oh, that's a, nobody's ever asked me that, you know. Mm. All this time, nobody. Oh, after what I went through before the other clubs, no. I kept hearing, "I'm good." Yeah, I'm yeah. good. I'm trust me. When I went, this is the thing, and I heard you before the support I give now, and 
it's that that time when I was training, when I was playing games for the youngsters when I was at school, and <laughs> every other father mm. come to me mm. and said, "Boy, well done, you were good, you wow. are good." And what it was for me, I just wanted my parents to come and see me. Yeah, yeah. To see how good I am. Yeah. And not, not one of them did. And that's the thing. It's like hearing from other people, you weren't too sure. Yeah. So to be honest, I, I well, didn't What was realize. normal and like... Yeah, 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 trust me. And they were there with their sons and parents, but I'm the only one who stood out a man of the match. Yeah. Um, I did. I really did want my parents to see how good I was. Is, so that, you is know. that validation that you missed out on? I did. That was totally what I wanted from them, and that was the support I I didn't get, and I think that's what I mainly was talk to the kids. Sorry to cut you. Was that Go something on. you were aware of at the time? Was it something you reflected on? And, and I think I wasn't aware of it at the time. Okay. Um. Sometimes you think like because you knew that your mum was working, mm. you knew that mum was coming out and so forth, and what she had to do. So you had to accept that. Yeah. Because yeah. she's bringing up two kids, yeah, to feed, mm. to clothes, for rent. And that you just didn't realise as a kid, you just think, yeah, man, yeah. come on, man. I'd say, you know what I mean? I, I'd tell her, I'm playing that thing, mum, can you come? Oh, I ain't got time. And you think, oh, yeah, she hasn't yeah. got time. So that she, she wants to be there, but she can't. You know what I mean? I've yeah. got to accept that. But I think you've got to, at these kids today, you've got to give them that support. And that's why yeah. I kind of throw out to them that like, yeah. parents, you need to show that the kids your support. They need to know that you're following. Um, and that's where you get that communication that's when you want to get that bond yeah with them so um it sure. was for me definitely that i lacked that but when you asked that question i didn't i honestly didn't think i was good enough to wow. be honest wow. when i said it. but um it's kept it was good hearing it from other people but it's like when you just went and nobody says nothing nobody you think yeah, yeah i think it's different hearing it from other people and then believing it yourself yeah, yeah. At, at that time i didn't i didn't i didn't i i think I had to come, to be honest, you had to pinch me. Even when I signed, you had to pinch me. It's almost like um, imposter syndrome, that you're not meant to be there. Meant it's to like, be, yeah. I'm tricking everyone. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, you know telling I mean? everybody, like, yeah. but like everybody else is telling me, Paul, you're going to do it. Yeah. Like, yeah, really. But the time it came and it was now, don't get me wrong, don't be your graces, you're here. What are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean? I've got yeah. seven months here now to prove. Um, and believe me, I, I thought it was really easy. I'm not going to lie. I thought really? training at Healing and Borough, who's semi pro, was harder than training as a pro. Oh. I I was able to do everything, maybe because I was so young and fit. And I, yeah, 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 I yeah. just thought, boy, this is great. <laughs> Running. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> I mean, when we went to Aberystwyth, and funny story that I was like, first time it was in Wales and pre-season training and it was running along the beach can you imagine first thing in the morning like governor in Wales, said, <laughs> in Wales. <laughs> first thing in the morning in the beach I so get that <laughs> ear in your palm get that <laughs> ear in your eye. and I was like that was Scottish wasn't it anyway <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> so um, there was two there was some couple of runners um, the field driver he was a winger from Wimbledon he was okay. quick Pete Rose Bound and myself the new boy well we've set off now me and um, Clyde, no, was it? Yeah, field drive. We're running, and I'm straight with him, shoulder to shoulder. And the boys, because he's always winning, and the boys start to call me, Go on, Kenneth, go on, Kenneth, give him a go, go on, Kenneth. And I did, I'll tell you, man, I was the new boy in there, so um, yeah. I love a running. That was me, yeah. I was fitness and that. But it was like, Wow, is this what they call training? It was like, it was new to me, yeah. So, um, with that, it was just uh, a whole thing. I think after four months. I've been playing so well, man of the match, playing at professional sides, uh, you know what I mean, clubs like Tottenham, West Ham, I was like, Jesus, you never <laughs> even think about this. Yeah. You know what I mean? You see this on the telly. I'm actually in this daily. Thousands like, of people watching. Dressing. Well, before that, that's just a reserve game, but you've got a couple yeah. of hundreds in there, but... It's playing in a stadium, quality pitches. No, 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 I'm them grass things on there. Yo, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was good times. Yeah. It certainly was for me. And obviously the story, um, getting called into the first team. And yeah, yeah. Making my debut. Yeah, I do want to talk about um, that that game at Sellers Park against Palace. That's where mm. you made your debut. Yeah. Um, and I mean... 
talking me through the motions in, in in the sense of coming off the bench with all that anticipation and then and then warming up because it's um it's I mean you tell me, but in in your book, it seems to be a very defining moment in your life. Mm. Mm. Look how you put that defining. Oh, <laughs> um, you know what it was. Never forget. It. Never forget the day. See it every time, and people remind me every minute. Um, like they say that kind of I was there. Kind of what you went through, how you did it. I was there, and um, you got to understand it because we. I knew I was a sub. And you got to understand that position as well. Mm. Remember, 11 players, mm. one sub. You see football today, yeah, yeah, yeah. six subs, yeah, use yeah, yeah. three of them. Yeah. Imagine it's a manager yeah. making a decision when to put you on. you got to understand that whether to change a game or whether there's an injury, yeah. he's got to make that decision. So um, it was like, yeah, yeah I've got in a coat, so let's part. I'm just taking around everything. I'm just taking in the hype. I think, God. This is where you want to be, Canners. Mm. And um, you come out, see the pitch, go in the change room now, get your kit on. And the boys will support everybody. Canners, all the best, son. If you get on, all the best. Shock them. I said, yeah. You know, when you're going for it, you're closing your eyes, you're thinking, yeah, you've got your single thing, your lucky ring, and mm. you come out, track suit, and now you see the whole of the ground. It's just stadium, it's just full up now. Fans, just hear the noise. So the boys are warming up and so forth and just sent aside there. Never heard nothing cool. Um, so it's set down now in the dugout. The game started at the beginning. They start, oh my God, yeah. Yeah, this is it. You can just hear the roar and cheering. And I was saying that obviously if you're a winger, your first instinct is look at this player who's going to be defending. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I'm looking at the guy and I, I just saw the movement on him. I said, D- he's damn slow. I'm going to skin him. Yeah. him the got pocket. him in my shots. Yeah. Simple <laughs> as. So, um, I'm just saying, yeah, just, yeah, when I get on, yeah, let's see. You got this, innit? You waited. First, I was tight, 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 even, and so forth. First, for 45 minutes, I thought, yeah. If it stays like this, he's got to put me on. Yeah. Got to. So it came back out and like 10 minutes went, still nil-nil. 15, 20 minutes went, nil-nil. I'm saying, man, come on. What's he doing? No, let me change this like, game. Oh, you're itching to get on Because yeah. you're yeah. talking now, man. And like, you can imagine the dugout. It's like this. Like, where you sitting in there and you've got all mm-hmm. five of us in there. And I'm telling you, I think, I need to remind him I'm here. <laughs> So, like, my studs, man, I'm not, I'm making noise, I'm talking to studs, and I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm making sure he knows I'm here, man. This my guy is not do that, doing man. nothing. Oh, Johnny, I ain't buzzing. Up, <laughs> you know? And it's going on, it's like 75 minutes, and I'm thinking, come on, man, what's wrong with this guy? 80 minutes. You can imagine my head is going, trust me. Yeah, man, the game's getting I'm on, I'm seeing this game, on, and I'm saying, get me the ball, I know what, I've exactly. just seen plays yeah, in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I said, boy, this guy ain't playing me. What is going on? And then when I heard that, I said, Cannons. I said, what? He said, go and get warm up. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, man. The <laughs> yeah, moment, man. You know that. Man. Things is running, right? <laughs> <laughs> my head is going down the line, and I'm going down the line, and I'm warming up now. I'm ready. I'm trusting. Stretching the legs out. You've been like, damn. You've been told. You've been shown this. You've got to stretch before you come out. Don't want to pull any muscles. Yeah. And that was when it just hit me. And I started hearing this abuse, this abuse shouting. And this time I haven't even looked at the crowd. I don't know who, where it's coming yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking, nah, boy, Crystal Palace fans are a bit dark. I'm like, nah. So I said, somebody's got to do something. And I'm still warming up down the line, stretching. And I heard the N word. I'm like, nah, nah, it can't be, it can't be. Mm-hmm. And I thought, no, it got worse. And I went, nah, I've got to look. Who's talking like that? And I took and I looked around and I was, I was literally gobsmacked, so shocked. No, nah, that's not Chris. That's Chelsea. These are Chelsea supporters, and they're abusing me like that. And I thought, you ain't even see how how good I am. You ain't seen how I played. I mean, wow. And trust me, man, that knocked me for six because um, put me on. I swear, Lord, I don't know why I went on me. I took off my tracksuit. Mm-hmm. I never moved from the sideline. That's all I remember. Was your head gone I from that moment? Gone. So it was just 
that kind of um, adrenaline that I had before. Was the window thrown out, gone. gone. Yeah, it was left. I, I hadn't moved. I I couldn't wait for the referee to blow his whistle. And when he did, I went straight in the dug into the change rooms and in the corner. And uh, if you're talking about going into a changing room, because we love to have banter. Always yeah. playing when you go in there with two jokes. Well, I'm lads, well, you're all the best. Did you see that bird? Oh, she was saucy. But like, quiet. Yeah. Literally silent. None of them could say to me, Canners, are you all right? Because they know I wasn't. And they cause they heard, literally. And it was like, sitting there, don't move for about 10 minutes. It was silent until everybody just carried on as normal. But, um, manager come to me, and that was the first. He said, I. He said, boy, I know how you might be feeling right now. So I was like, what? He said, but these are the same guys who are paying your wages. It's what you're going to do now. And wow. He was right. Um, it was a case of making the decision, do I stay here or do I go? Um, I had my cousins. I don't even remember how I got home that day. Um, I remember cousins calling me. He said, why would you want to play for a racist side? I have to explain. It's not the team that's racist, but minority of ignorant people yeah. understand back then the 80s was the National Front running the yeah, right yeah, wing yeah. was running don't get me wrong, I've grown up in that it was when I was 16 15, even younger than that when walking with my sister at the time when it was about 7, 8 o'clock in the evening but it was getting dark that early then and you saw a car slow down you saw its brake lights you had to stop turn back because that was natural front skinheads and they were just beating Jesus everybody Jesus Christ so that's how frightening it was so I wasn't scared about that but I was just shocked you went that I had reached that this is a professional club as far as I'm concerned mm. football I'm not expecting to see that or hear that why is, so, why is, why is race even getting involved well there you go where did that come from I, I was shocked I'd, I'd never heard it before I come there I've never heard about it and I was watching it on telly and I think my first game that I ever watched football was um, West Ham playing QPR at Loftus Road. Yeah. And I remember I was 12 years old and I had to beg my mum. And there was a white guy that took me. Begged, I begged my mum. Yeah, he'd be all right. He'd be safe. I thought, okay. And I remember jumping in the stand because I couldn't see. Jumping, jumping, jumping. Trying to get and see. And then this white guy looked at me. He said, hey, he, your dad ain't been doing too well. So I was thinking, oh, you know, it's my dad. Mm. My dad plays cricket. Mm. I didn't know that. So I'm about to ask him, do you know? And the white guy was with me, said, no, Paul, don't. So I realised now he was talking about Clive Best, who's playing for West Ham. Yeah. And he's oh, going, what? he's being racist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, didn't realise that until later. <laughs> so that was when growing up, not understanding, but. I've been through that, so I ain't expecting to see this in this environment, to be honest. It was, yeah, it, it took me for six. My stuff. How was it, um, how hard was it to convince yourself to keep playing in terms of like, Ooh, you know what? Yeah, that, that is the question. Mm. Um, going every day, training, and obviously you playing the reserves, because when you ain't playing, you're playing reserve and you play good, and then you're calling the first team, it's like, oh, what to expect mm. and even when at home and even at way I just felt I had to play twice as better than my teammates yeah. just to try and get like, to be accepted yeah um, it was like oh my gosh daunting it was like when the teams were called out <laughs> they all got a chair when my name come out <laughs> boo all around the surroundings so that wasn't a confident booster at all for me um it was like, boy, it was dreading when we was playing at home. And at that time, if you remember, the round had the little tracks around mm -hmm. it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, we used the dugout was always on the right-hand side of the tunnel. Yeah. So, and I dreaded when managers tell me, oh, can it's going to get warmed up. I was like, oh, my God. Because I used to go down the east stand. And when I went past there, the same racist abuse I was receiving. Oi, nigga. Wow. Sit down. This um, I'm telling you, I was just cock I didn't even look at them. I just head straight, heard it, heard it, heard it until I went behind the goal, which was behind the Matthew Hardy until I 
Yeah. And I warmed up, I warmed up, I warmed up. I must have been the longest warm ups I used to do. I mean <laughs> longest and it was a case when manager or the assistant manager used to be calling me back. <laughs> and I know they was calling me. Yeah. But I was ignoring them. Ignoring it, yeah. But I didn't want to go back past them same kind of crowd. And I did it wow. every time, man. I went to Canners. Mm. Mm. So, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the same thing. I was like, whoa. Yeah, it just, there wasn't a confidence. I had to kind of block that. But it was hard to. And don't get me wrong, there was times that I wanted a guy in that stand. And yeah, yeah I don't yeah, care yeah, how many yeah. of you. I yeah. yeah. Eric Cantor. Yeah, yeah, man. Flat exactly, flat yeah. Flat yeah, man. At yeah, times I felt like that. But you know what? It was the times when you thought, if I did that, the club ain't going to see about what they did to me. They're going to see what I did. Yeah. My exactly. action won't go down Exactly. Well. So yeah. I'll be bombed out. And that's yeah. the reason why. I think so. Mm. Wow, man. I mean, Pat Nevin was one of the only players to, to come out and support you publicly. Did you ever resent your other teammates for doing the same? No. Pat. It was a new um, guy. At that time, you could imagine we were second division and we just survived from well, being, oh, well, dropping down into third. Mm -hmm. I think the club was about to fold up if we went, apparently, wow. I heard. Wow. But we survived and obviously a new flux of players came in. Yeah, Pat, um, Nigel, um, John McLaughlin, um, who's our keeper? God, how can I forget him? <laughs> um, Welsh keeper, he was um, he was great. Yeah. Um, we had a Kerry Dixon then come in. Trust me, and we went away. We trained. Um, Aberystwyth again. Come back, start the season. Bam, straight in. Wow. And we was like, it's unbelievable that we combinated right away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. First game, I must have been Derby five nil. <laughs> it was unbelievable. So um, obviously, situation where we played. Chris Palace again and game was same thing tight London derby yeah. and Pat was the only one who scored but I received the same, yeah, same disabuse thing, and um, well, uh, at that time it's just being televised and they wanted um, to interview Pat talk about the goal talk about the game and Pat refused to talk about the game he just went straight in and said no I'm disgusted with wow. what I heard the racism from my own fan, it disgusts me. You should be. I was like, Pat, are you mad? Don't yeah. do that. You can't do that. And I'm really saying because you'd get in trouble. Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. coming from our authorities above. They was like, yeah, they warned him about it as well. But wow. Pat it was one of those persons. He, he, trust me, Pat is very bright. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's an independent man. You can't tell him what to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he, know, he can chat about any topic going. Um, and that was his his opinion, and he let him out to know, and I had to thank him because I'm not saying my player teammates didn't want to do that; they didn't because maybe they were told not to, yeah. and they would have got in trouble. Outside but influences, Pat isn't it? Didn't you know? I mean, didn't care. Pat, he, yeah. he went, he went against the grain. You yeah. went against the grain, man. I, I, you know what? I respect that so so much. Imagine the time that time, incredible. Yeah, yeah. don't get me wrong. How did they make you feel? Because obviously, no one's done that before. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Uh, we kind of linked. Um, very good, good, good friend. We really linked. And I think how we got on was about, well, we shared music talents. Mm -hmm. His taste. Was, and I thought it was, this, there's this music that he showed me and it was, oh God, who is he? I always got, and I got the name all this time wrong. <laughs> yeah. I really did. I thought it was Cat Stevens he was talking about this beat because he showed me this beat. We, remember, we was on the coach. Yeah, yeah. Where we used to travel on our way. So everybody used to play cards, but me and Pat, tch, the tape went in. Yeah, this Pat. Boom, boom. So Pat played his tune. And I thought all this time it was Cat Steven. He told, he told me the other day it was Lou Reed. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I'm telling everybody, well, yeah, he showed me about Cat Stevens, you know. And now he's told me it was Lou Reed. I said, shut up. Anyway, so 2-2, um, two, two, yeah, we was bossing music on the coach, man. He said, they were telling us, shut, take that shit off. He said, hey, what, stop your card or shut the fuck. Anyway, we played cards. They played <laughs> cards and we played music. And that's how we and Pat got on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, obviously, even though he's a DJ. He's yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to hear him play it, bruv. So he's all right. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah, he's all right, bruv. I'm not me wrong. The music ain't my kind of cup of tea, but I understand a couple of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. He can play. He can play. Yeah, yeah. Wow. 
there's a there, there's a quote from your book that, that really really stood out to me um you said i made history and the fans made my life hell mm. for me that 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 i mean i mean I'm, 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 I'm i mean i'm i'm 21 and even though racism is still very prevalent in in football today mm. as as we saw the other night mm. in, in in the um england bulgaria game yeah um the old your is your own fans yeah. mm. abusing you and is 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 that something even though today you still haven't got over yeah no i don't, you see i don't hold a bitterness yeah don't get me wrong it, for those of, for me right now there's a memory and yeah. how difficult it was for me to break in my dream you lot made it difficult for me don't get me wrong yeah. but mm-hmm. i had to understand it was a minority not my majority a yeah. minority because there was a lot of people that came and support me can as we're sorry about this. We we're not all like that. And that I loved. Yeah. It was just to get through to these lads, to let them know. But at that time, it was the National Front followings and there was, you know what I mean, yeah. resurfacing yeah. Yeah. and, you yeah. know what I mean, yeah. uh, recruiting and so forth. But, yeah. um, for me, um, I held up bitter um, mm-hmm. from, obviously, I had to focus with my life, obviously, having to in, get injured um, when I when I did get injured, yeah. say it was about that to be honest. And I must have left Chelsea <laughs> at a time. And if you don't know about it, you will now. So it was a situation with my teammate how that happened and um he racially abused me. Didn't like it. Warned him warned him twice, warned him the third time, went down and kinda knocked him out. But with that um, Monday, I was well, the Friday for we driven back to London, and before I got the training for Monday, I was given a call and told not to report to the training ground or the no way. or Chelsea. Now, young boy, I must say about twenty three, yeah. not realizing, still got two years. Well, what does that mean? I can't train. I realize now, assistants come back and phone me up to tell me at Paul. Do you fancy going down to Millwall? Are you no, what? Mad? No, that is mad? What I went through Chelsea, you want me to go down Millwall? So I just told him, get off me phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Politely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that's when I realised that I'd been bombed out. Yeah. And everybody, every player that was there would said that that person would have been the one who'd gone because he racially abused me. Yeah, exactly. But no, I was. Wow. And, and I... I didn't like to it, it hurt because yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no inkling of leaving Chelsea mm. at that time. Um, and that really did hurt. But I, all I wanted to do was play football. Yeah. So it's a case, um, I think Frank McClintock was down at Brentford. I went there. I was just about to sign. And, oh, God, Ian Brentford came in, who was at Reading at the time, where mm. Kerry had just left as yeah. well. So I went down there. Um, but, yeah, I didn't hold it. I just... It was in the back of my mind, I think about it, but you know what? I wanted to play football. Let's get on with this. Mm-hmm. That but, was um, the next kind of thing, isn't it? I think, yeah. yeah. If Chelsea really should have done more, better. Yeah. I don't care what anybody, I don't care what it saved. It's really, you should have done a lot better yeah. about that situation. Do, do you think it's little things like that that causes these comments and stuff to continue and small things like that? That's why it's still happening today. Um, It, it can do, mm. but that's why we've got to nip it on the bud. Um... That's probably why we got the, the organisations like Kick Out, yeah, and Show Race and yeah. Cards. Yeah, um, I didn't have that, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. where it was about anything that stood out like that, I, I couldn't have. The, I didn't have nobody to complain to. Mm. You know what I mean? And for me, it was like if I said something, a young, I thought if I did complain, it was like <sighs> they're seeing me. As, he's weak. Yeah, um, probably not ideal for us. You know what I mean? And let me yeah. go. So that's why I kept a lot of that inside. inside. Yeah, I didn't say nothing. And not that I didn't want to trust me. I was getting really angry. And mm-hmm. I probably, throughout the years, I started to get tougher with decisions. Yeah. And decisions, and they told me that, nah, I don't like it. Do you, do you think your career would have been different if mental health support had been available when you were playing? Yeah, that definitely um, played a part. Yeah. And I probably was in denial. I didn't realise um, through that time of playing, 
um, it would have helped me to know I could have talked to somebody. But at that time, you can understand coming back from Car- a Caribbean background, we were always told hey, what your business is in these four walls. Yeah, you don't talk to nobody. Yeah, you don't yeah, tell yeah. nobody your business, and that was my mum. So I thought that was normal. Yeah. You know what I mean, if I got a problem, I go to you. I don't tell nobody. So you yeah. ask me, you right, Paul? Like, yeah, cool. So I give you all the smiles. I'm cool. Yeah, but I wasn't. Mm. So um, if that was all those organising things that you said there was around at this time, that time, oh yeah, it would have made a major difference. Yeah, we were we were talking with Eddie and um, and he he was he he, he was saying how the provisions nowadays are ten times yeah. better than they than they than they were because. As, as I was saying, you know, back in back in the day, you 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 couldn't speak out, and ov- ov- obviously you've got you know you're a man and 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 yep. and, and and you can't talk, but you know um, players players can talk about it now. It's, it's a lot more accepted, which I think is great. What you saw there, what you're saying is right because we were men, so men who are playing football, getting paid. Why would you be arguing? Why would be anything to complain about? Yeah, but you don't know. You thought just. When we finished training, it was like, what did we have to do? Mm. We'd finished training. It's not like we had a second job. Yeah. We just finished training. It was like, and go home. Now, go home, like, that's boredom. It was like, you wanted to find something to do. Mm. And many people went, McDonald's. Eat mm-hmm. McDonald's, man. And you know, you didn't know about dietary then. You yeah. Just yeah, yeah. And then Nutrition you know, wasn't oh, like, yeah, oh, sure. I've got better <laughs> 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 you know I mean? But that's what it was yeah. at that yeah. time. We didn't have nobody nurturing yeah. us on anything. So that's what he did. And like, you know, I mean, something's on your mind, household problems, with your missus or your mum or family. You didn't have nobody to talk to. That was it. You were supposed to be man up. But today, like Eddie said, it's different because those cycles have come around where the authorities had to put them in place. Yeah. It's simple mm-hmm. as now yeah. you've got chapel, you can go to the chapel and have a word. It's private. You can have now uh, a social worker, well, not a social worker, but a counsellor. Yeah. Talking to the counsellor. I swear, Lord, I, the only time I could be in straight, because when I had a drug problem, I went into the rehab and they were talking about this is the program, you have to talk to a counsellor. I went, talk to the counsellor? You must be mad. Yeah. Me, I'm not talking to nothing. And they said, well, that's the program. If you don't, you'll be trying that. Yeah. Well, I've come to come and get myself better. So I've got to follow. And I went in, and this guy, straight up, sitting just like this in a chair. And he's asking me, so why are you here? Are you an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I'm in here yeah, for? Yeah, exactly, yeah. I swear, I, t- I didn't know where he was. I just went straight at him. He said, well, Paul, what's your problem? Are you for real? I was I was hammering the game. <laughs> so I told the guy, I said, no disrespect, mate, but I'm black and you're white and you're not understanding my culture and where yeah. I'm coming from right now. So and I'm not racist, trust me, but I don't think this is gonna work out. I told him straight. Yeah. So we went and he went and straight up I sat down for the whole hour. Wow. Not saying a word. Because if I left, I'd have been in trouble and trouble yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I sat down yeah. and I went straight off and said, Look. I'm not a person that leaves that. I want to talk, but you'll have to find a black guy. Simple as. He's going to understand where I'm coming from. I said, okay. And they did. Wow. I still gave him trouble. <laughs> yeah. He still asked that question. I said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but he hit me, and he did. He hit the point. He said, do you have problems with your parent, mum? Whoa. And I am, what do you mean by my mum? What are you talking about my mum? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. He was yeah, right. Think about them questions before, really. Yeah, yeah, he was right. Yeah. He hit me, and it was my kids. He hit Every point going, and it just opened up. And yeah, I opened up, yeah, brother. The, the shoulders were shoulder, heavy, man. weren't heavy no more, bro. Wow, man. And I went one, two. I was looking forward to talking to this guy, yeah. And that was wholly off, obviously, what I wanted. And it helped. So, I'm telling you, but men out there, you boys out there, if you've got a problem, please don't be frightened to talk to people, yeah. Talk to the individual. It's pr- when you talk to a counselor, it's private, trust me, it's private. What you say to them doesn't go nowhere. Mm. And you need to get things off your chest. Get them off, bro. Speak about it. Speak yeah, about man. it. Get it out. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Th- things think things are ten times better left out. Oh man, trust me, it helps. It does help. How do you think we break that stigma though? Because I've speaking to a, a few of my friends in uni and stuff, a lot of them have said that they feel like no one can help them with their problems nah, they're going through. That's not. If you come out like uh, same thing about mental health, you know, mental health I always thought it was elderly. There's mental health from 14-year-old kids. I'm feeling it, bro. 
I went in the school talking like I do in my workshop. And when a young boy, I was talking about all what I went through. And the young boy said, oh, yeah. And, oh, so how did you um, recognise that you, you had mental health injury? Oh, man. I was in denial. I was so depressed. And, like, and I'm usually the house of the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life. Yeah, yeah. Life of the party, should I say. And the guy said, yeah, but what did you do about it? Oh, and I'm realising... This guy's talking about himself, you know, yeah. but I didn't want to talk about it like yeah. in front of his kid, yeah, like yeah. to make him know it's him. I said, man, let me tell you something. You've got something like that. Go and talk about it. Yeah. Tell your mum or share it with somebody. Do not hold it. Please don't. He said, yeah, I hear you. Thank you. I hear wow. you. And I wanted to pull him to the side, but I don't want to make it so, so obvious. Because yeah. mm. his mates so heard it. And don't get me wrong, man. It's out there. I, for me, it was like even doctors. You know, we get a pain and thing. We get a pain and the pain's there and you mm -hmm. think, oh, and it goes and you think, oh, well, it's all right. But it'll come back again. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look how many times we do that and thinking, ah, oh, we'll took the tablet and oh, it's nothing. Trust me, bro. Yeah, I was fixed. two, yeah, man. I was two weeks. I was in pain. Two weeks. Used to, when I was in rehab, yeah. used to wake up. It woke me up in the morning and I had to sit up like this and I was in sweat and I had to sleep like this. I was taking neurofine tablets like six at a time. And I was like this. Sleeping up right. Two weeks. I wouldn't go to doctors. I wouldn't. I'm just taking until I couldn't take no more. Mm. I said, look, I need permission to go to doctor. Go ahead. I said, went to doctor. Before I went in there, doctor, I told him symptoms. I said, look, this is what I'm having. It's cold sweats, in pain. In the grain. He said, all right, hold it. I was on the phone. Next thing, he's trying to, you've got to go to hospital now. What? you got a hospital now. I've got a bed for you. A bed for what? You've got to go to hospital. They will tell you. So I've gone to the hospital. Yeah, we got your bed for you. We're operating tomorrow. Here's up. You're operating? For what? Nobody's telling me nothing. Mm. All in all, I feel that. Next thing you know, I've operated and I got up, woke up, got bags and a lot. And he said, you had Hodgkinson's disease, cancer. Mm. And I'm thinking, bro, that can't be right. I'm a fit lad. I've just yeah, come yeah, out of yeah. retirement not too many years yeah, ago. Yeah, and so it's cool. Bro, worst thing in my life I've ever seen. Don't get me wrong. That, along with catching up with drugs, were the worst things in my life. Yeah. Um, it knocked me back. Um, they said about the chemo. I thought chemo was like, you know, I thought your medicine. Sort me yeah. out. Get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> that chemotherapy, mate. I was at that age, 36, I think, or 30. And, um, yeah, it must have been, yeah, 36. And I felt like I was 75. I felt that old. Mad. It had me creased up. And they tell me about your immune system would go down. It, like, it'd be half and half. It. Even a little kid, his immune system would be bigger and stronger than yours. I couldn't understand what you mean. So I took it lightly. He said, look, if you get a cold, you need to come to hospital. Mm. I went, like, well, okay. I had a cold. I thought, I'd go to hospital, just take my honey and lemon like your mum gives <laughs> you. Yeah. Some penicillin and rip that up and drink that. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Once again, <laughs> two weeks. This thing has knocked me out. It won't go. Mm, and I'm there until I was lying down sleeping. And then I woke up and I told Mrs. I said, babes, something's not right. She said, what's it mean? I'm paralyzed. Shut up, Paul. Don't worry. I've said, babes, all I could do is move my head. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. I was literally couldn't move my feet, couldn't move my legs, nothing. Um, so I had to get rushed to the hospital that rushed I was going in and out of coma and I just arrived at the hospital in time um, it's funny because I tell this story every time and it's real because the woman who's specialist who's looking after me sorry <coughs> God, come. like my mum's the other person who cursed me yeah, 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 trust yeah, me yeah. tell me off one time I have to humble pie <laughs> and this woman yeah. she cussed me really? how dare you and I'm like who is she who is she talking to you oh. But she was right. Yeah. I was taking this lightly. I nearly died. And the only reason why she could curse me like and allowed her to, she was a Chelsea supporter. Ah, <laughs> there we go. I'm not lying. That's the only reason why. <laughs> <laughs> she knew me well, boy. I trust me. The only reason that no woman could have cursed me like that, she cursed me. Was a Spurs fan. You wouldn't have had it, in it. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was um, the time when I've took this. So I've had the cancer three times. Wow. 96, 2002, 2004, yeah. 10. I, I, Take it I, 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 d I don't, 
you've beaten cancer three times. It's, it's yeah, crazy, that's man. a tough one. Like, uh, For me, I, 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 my brain can't fathom it. Really, but I was growing up and saw my cousin who was fifteen died from it, and so when you realize, you think that cancer was it was. I can't say in golf and dwelled in elders. I always thought it was elderly. Yeah. But it weren't elderly. It was former kids. This you gotta understand, this cancer's in you. It's in every one of us. It's how it comes out. It's yeah, when, yeah, it comes when it out. comes out. And obviously I didn't help not looking after myself, getting the drugs and not caring about myself. This came out. Mm. And it took me and it knocked me. And I was surprised. The second time I wasn't prepared to take that treatment again. Mm. And I was I was refusing it. It was only because I bought one of my kids' mum with me. Yeah, she cursed me, told me off, and yeah. selfish, being selfish that I took the treatment. Then I knew the third time I knew it was there because I got that pain. I went there and they confirmed it, and they kept me in hospital for the whole month. And I had stronger drugs. And when you visit me, and she was covered, and all I could see was your eyes, head to toe, you was covered. I couldn't, you couldn't even cough on me. I so said, "Bad." It was like, and even then, I refused. I hate hospitals. I was in there watching the windows and people walking. It was near quick. I said, look, I don't care. You're going to have to give me something. I'm coming out. I write it. I sign it. I sign it. I'm coming out. But Mr. Kennedy, you can't. I don't care. I'm coming out. And they said, yeah, all right. The only way we could do this is that you go home and we bring a nurse and she gives you jabs every day. Mm. I said, yeah, that's fair yeah. enough. So, yeah, don't get me wrong. But it was time after that, really, I had to find myself. Um, and it was being invited back to Chelsea. Yeah. I think everybody was looking for me, and like me, I was in denial and hiding from everybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Embarrassed and sh- shame. You know I mean, getting involved in drugs and so forth. Didn't want nobody to know, but they knew. How how lonely of a space is that? Like, because um, depression. I would trust me. When. It was a time where I just thought nothing was working, nothing was happening. And. um. Tried to take my life. Yeah, I took 25 tablets. Stupid. I just said I couldn't take no more. I was letting down people and I thought, nah, I can't do this no more. And I took 25 tablets and I thought, boy, yeah, just sleep. And I wake up. And I lie and I slept and I slept and I slept. And one eye opened up. Wow. And um, I saw this bright light, like this light here coming through the window. I just thought that uh, it was just, I didn't even know what I was doing. I just saw a bright light and I thought, oh my God, I'm in heaven. I'm in heaven. Until I opened the other eye and it was only a bloody fucking light. <laughs> it was a bloody light coming from the curtain. And I was like, damn, man. <laughs> How hard is this going to be? <laughs> Trust me, I, 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 I laugh at it lightly, but at that time, brother, I've got 25 tabbies in me and I'm still thinking, how can I instantly just take my life? The only way was to step out in front of a bus or a truck. And I don't know why. I opened up to my like my kid's mom and she said, you what? She came around, cursed me again, mm. took me to the doctor. They now rushed me to the hospital to pump I'm me out of yeah. the thing. Next thing you know, they wanted to keep me in psycho. I went, no, 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 I'm all right. No, no, we can't trust that. I had to beg them. Wow. I can't. I'm all right. Nope. We can't tell that. You tried to take your life. And I really had to convince them, I'm all right now. Mm. And that was like my thinking, oh my God, am I psycho? People hear about that? I was like, I'm thinking about people People, hearing it, not myself, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was worse. And yeah, I convinced them. And from there, I just sort out, get stronger, get some work. And that's where Chelsea came in. I was back there um, on the program, the workshop program, the foundation, which education department. Yeah. And told me to go around and share my story at schools. And I was thinking, but these same kids weren't even born when I was playing. How did they know about me? But here we go, because I wasn't computer literate. He's like, oh, Mr. Cannibal, yes, we know about you. How do you know about me? Wikipedia. (laughs) 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 Wikahoo? Who's this talking about me? Who's this this Wiki Don? Trust (laughs) me. I went home for that one and I had to ask my daughter, Wikipedia. Oh, daddy. No, seriously. (laughs) (laughs) And I saw this information. Yeah, that is shit. All this information about me. I went, you've got to find this Wiki guy. I never told him. (laughs) You know what I mean? How did you get that? 
trust me, when them kids were bright, yeah, back yeah, yeah. you can imagine, yeah, they was putting up some hands and asking some questions. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. And I looked at the teacher. They've opened the door. <laughs> you can answer. And I was like, so my story was renovating. It was just coming out and I was just sharing how I was growing up and what I wanted to do and your yeah. dreams. Listening to how important your education is and this reason why your mums and dads want the best for you. And they, they was listening. Yeah. I mean, I had kids like this. Shh. Shh. Wow. Well, well, and I had teachers coming Rarity to me. Rarity that. Yeah, yeah. How, yeah. how, how you, you know that? that? <laughs> a teacher coming to me, oh. And that was just for an hour and, and 40, uh, 15 minutes. Yeah. And the teacher would laugh. She told me, please don't go. <laughs> <laughs> please don't go. And I was like, what, what? oh my God, what you did an hour, I can't even do from nine to three. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, no. I enjoyed it. I mm. loved every minute. And even when I got a position as a TA, teaching assistant, mm -hmm. Man, that was the best feeling. Because being back at school, I just realised what I missed. Yeah. I couldn't believe how many holidays they have, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't, know holidays. Holidays. You don't realise really that when you're the kids. Yeah, it's, like, you got no, it's like, you just had a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. As a pit, you know what I mean? As an adult, it's in, well, God, we're off for a week and we're getting paid. This is cool. <laughs> Plus, you leave early, nine to three. Three o'clock. Everybody before the rush, like, I'm going home. It's yeah. nice. <laughs> this is good. I had. Why didn't I think about? No, we talking about this earlier, mm, isn't it? Rough, man. Yeah. And my kids were great. Yeah. I had a year threes, and I sorted them out, man. I, it was good to take a for a tea because, like, remember the teacher used to shout at you, so, "Hey, what you running for?" <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, yeah. "Yes, Mr. Kind of, that's better. You slow down." He was like, "Yeah, yeah I, I like this." this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I, I did a lot for them. Yeah, um, I say this now because I'm. I know in them schools, they need a lot more male teachers. They're yeah, not yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And these kids want that. And I was so good. Um, I got through to them that how important this education was, man. And look, just don't be frightened to pull up your hand. Don't be frightened to ask me for your help. And yeah. I had parents coming to me. Yeah. said, look, man, my son or my girl have not talked, stopped talking about you. Wow. Please, if there's any trouble you have with them, come to me. And really, they're supposed to go to the teacher yeah. who's in charge. But they won't share with him. They will share yeah. with me. Yeah, and that was a nice feeling. Don't get me wrong for me. I mean, you're you're you're, you're planning of giving back. Yeah, to society. Yeah. I, I I didn't think I'd be doing that, and I ain't gonna lie yeah. to you. Here I was, loving this. Was it a form of therapy as well? It was for me. Yeah, yeah. Because I can now turn it around and explain and share exactly what I missed out. I don't want you to miss out. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trust me, you know. Yeah, you have this help more than what we ever had when I was growing up. There's so much out there. Take advantage of it. And that's what I'm saying. Take advantage of it. Do you mean I'm telling you? Mm. Don't be shy. They, they, they can help you. If no one doesn't help you, there's somebody else that can. Mm. And I just kept constantly telling them that and showing that. And they was on. I mean, the only reason how I left the school is because I was in remission. Mm. From mm -hmm. And worst people to get calls from? The kids. Yeah. I was. They knocked yeah. me out. I was out for weeks and it came to the man, look, we need you so bad, but obviously you're taking this time off, we can't do it. And I said, you're right. So I, you know, I mean, gave it up. And that's probably why I started up my foundation. Yeah. yeah. Cannibal Stein Foundation. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to say I can give. Now, I didn't wait for nobody. And it's not just the primary youngsters, it's the elderly now, the teenagers. And you know what's going on in the street with this knife crime as well. Yeah. Oh, um, man, yeah. So it is about, for me, um, resilience. Because um, mm -hmm. I've been knocked down yeah. so many times it's about getting back up. Yeah. So when you refuse, man, don't think it's we get back up. You go in detention, you go in remand, in Boston, what come out. Don't think that you can't get something or you need to go back into that crime. Try it and try it again. Mm. Don't yeah. easily descend there and say, oh, well, I tried the track. Nah, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we give them that boost, you know what I mean? We've got some good staff members when I say kept me my foundation. Um, and it's been going well. Don't get me wrong. How long's the foundation been? Since 2015. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think I had the new, some couple of guys that I f believed in me. And we started it up, don't get me wrong. But I don't think they knew and understood the real course of where I wanted the foundation to go. Yeah. Um, that other staff, I mean, well, when I say members came in and where it is now is where I want to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. As such, I think I just love being involved if anybody asks me and I can be I'll get involved don't get me wrong I still love 
the steak for Chelsea. Yeah, I yeah, still yeah. Do yeah. yeah. With the hospitality there, at the match days, and I love it because it's nice when um, fans can come up to me and remind me to miss a carnival. I apologize and apologize. Wow, apologize for what? I was one of those people that used to basically abuse you, and like you stand there thinking, "What do I do here?" Man, that's done, man. But you realize it's in love, man. I do realize, and now I talk to the kids and I talk to them about racism, the effect it has on them. And that's the most I can do. I'm so glad you know that. Mm. To, to to divert a little bit, you mentioned people have come back and apologized. Mm. Um, again, going back to the comparison with racism now in football, how do you think it's um being dealt with? Nah, it's not being dealt with. You don't think it's not being it's dealt obvious. with? It's not. It's not been dealt with, true. No, it's so obvious, don't get me wrong. Yes, we have our own problem here in England, but we're talking, obviously, this week is what happened on Monday with the Bulgarian and England game. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, I, I love my football, I follow it, but protocol, when I didn't even know that was in place. Yeah. 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 And I think quite a few people didn't know that was in place mm -hmm. until, perhaps, it's so funny enough, it came in place this week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I found out from... Was it Thursday last week or the week before reading the paper standard protocol? That? Never and then that. it happened. Yeah. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I say it, this is our players are not being protected enough. Yeah. That's not being protected by the authorities as well. Yeah. Now this incident not happened at all. before at Mon Mon Montenegro. Montenegro, yeah. yeah. Where Danny Rose got sent off. All because he, you know what I mean, protecting himself of racist behaviour. Mm. He got sent off. Mm. Now there was the stance that you should have done something. I don't care, you a for FIFA. You should have done something. You gave him a petty fine of fifty thousand, okay, but you never followed nothing. So now, you made the issue or made the media. This is played a big part. Yeah. Media makes a mention. Oh, so we're going Serbia or some or Bulgaria. Da 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 da. Bad, bad, touch, some trouble there. European. Da, da, da. Now, Serbia knows. So here, what now? Let's have the authorities here what to explain and show them explain. Yeah, you're gonna have to calm down with this. Yeah. It's not right. Your people, this is what the game is about. Let's be calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nobody's mentioned that. Mm. Two two. The same racism. I've never seen so hostile. It was disgusting. It was all it was shocking. I, I shocking. can't believe it. Twenty nineteen. Trust me, it was like when people say thirty years on and that's like nearly thirty, thirty five years yeah. since I mean. And to see that behavior, I was like, I was, I was angry. Yeah. Because you put, you're putting the players in a situation there. Now, I agreed when what Abraham said. He said, "Well, we'll walk up." I said, "He's right." And I, I'd see people saying, "Ah, oh, well, Paul, uh, the racists will win." No, nobody wins. But right now, it's not them black players being militant by walking off mm. because I would expect the whole of your team to be supportive of you yeah, and, and walk off together with you. With yeah. you. But it shouldn't be left to them to make that decision. Yeah. The authorities yeah. above have it's, got to it's make that decision. It's, to protect it's UEFA. Them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to protect them. Even if I own FA, you say, here what? No, we're taking the boys out of this. Yeah. So we take them all off. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong. All right, dilemma was England winning 5-0, 6-0. Mm. Now, if they went off before that, mm. the point is they would have lost the game, lost the points. Yeah. But if the referee took them off, they would have won it. That's the dilemma. Yeah. But I'm sorry. You see that and you hear that. The re uh, not even that. The manager, mm. oh when asked how he honestly said, I didn't hear nothing. Now don't get me wrong. I thought he had earplugs <laughs> because I wouldn't him. I would have preferred them earplugs when I was playing. And yeah. the keeper said the same as well. Same. That was ridiculous. That was so embarrassing. Yeah. And it disrespected us in a way of racism. It, the, the hit, it, trust me, I was so angry. I was and, angry. And um. Uh, I think it was only the, their captain. Yeah, the he captain. went and talked. It was mm. the only. Now, why he would have? I've never heard any or seen anybody a captain to go and talk to his fans to calm yeah. them down. Yeah. This is behavior. This is what's going to happen if you don't. Da, da, da. Please, please, please. Yeah. Come on. Who's supposed to do that? Yeah. This is why I said, this. and this is why I can't see the whole world had saw this, and if the whole world had saw this, right? Bulgaria and FA, UEFA. What are you seeing? Mm. Yeah, are exactly. you telling me? And once again, exactly. oh yes, they've caught four guys and given them four hundred fifty pound fine, apparently in our sterling money, <laughs> and banned for two years. Hold on, a minute here. Mm. Now our boys, and I'll get me wrong, we're not too sure whether it was racially abused. Um, at Chelsea yeah. to Ram Staley, we don't still know 
it's a questionnaire. But Chelsea went and banned them for life. Yeah, yep, yeah. exactly. They took proper yeah. action. Don't get me wrong. So what is it you owe for? This money thing, this is all he's talking about. That's what right? I'm saying. All comes, money, comes down to money, to money doesn't it? It comes down to money. It's got to be down. I'm sorry, you had Blatter who was running it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How did he get kicked out? <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. Crockery. Yeah, man. And then now you got these. Nah, man. There's I'm no morals. There's no, no morals. And, they, and, they've, and they've got the... Uh, the respect campaign, you know, and and the fans are making a mockery of it. You see, yeah, they're, they're yeah, like they a say, yeah, yeah, they yeah. no respect. Get him out. What's wrong with him, man? Uh, yeah, it was appalling. It hurt. It really did hurt to see that. And the young lads, how they feel? I think we're now with me, because um, mm. I've been asked as well, invited down at Cobham to talk to the academy boys. Yeah, um, just to share, and I think it is to understand as well that. The parents, because of all what's been going on, the parents are comfortable that their young black lads or their young sons are going to feel safe. Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. making sure it is. Trust me, it is safe. Yeah. Uh, Farzan is in one of the best um, youth establishment in the world, and today the much talent that's come out of there, oh, I mean, you've seen. Yeah. That is there yeah. now with Lampard and bless that brother, oh, giving them a chance. You know the birth though. It's good. I'm enjoying life. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. Love where I am. Yeah. Um love what I'm doing. Um yeah. hopefully to continue. And obviously you get to you know I mean, get to share this yeah, with man. people like yourself, certain things. No, no, really, it really it really is an honor. Um and I, I do I do wanna talk about um you going back to Chelsea in two thousand six. Yeah. Um that that day of walking back out onto the pitch the first time to face those fans? It was um, very nervous. Um, obviously, as I said, being invited back to Chelsea and obviously, um, I think of that time, ooh, being invited, it was by Neil Barnett. I don't know, Neil used to be the announcer, come on the pitch, but when he told me about I was like, oh my God. I mean, do they know what's going on with me or what happened? And mm. That's what I was nervous about. Yeah. And it was like, it's funny because I was down in, where was I? I can't remember. I was with him. I got the tube. I could imagine I was at Fulham, got to Fulham. I saw all these bands in the blue and I went, shit, I'm sitting in there. And not one of them was recognising that. There was people talking about the game. Yeah, yeah, we'll have some of these for them. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> and I said, yeah, what? What's going on with these Brits? I was like, you're right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, you know what I mean? Until I got to the ground, and it was so different. Yeah, I'm, I've honestly was, was, was that the first time you can be first time from 2004? I've come out, and wow. I was like, Where's the track? Where's the track's gone in it? Yeah, <laughs> where's the shedding? I was like, It's all seated. Oh my gosh, I'm seriously, I was like, What's going on there? Whole new world, man. whole is new this Chelsea, you like, yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. I said, Wow, Paul, this is changed. Yeah. I said, how long ago? Well, years. I'm like, what? And it was funny. I stood up in um, the east side. It was right near the yeah. away fans. It was like, oh, my God. And Man City was playing, I think. And um, I remember now, it was, it was like, oh, my God. I was like, wow. That's a one, two, three, four, five. I saw six black players in Chelsea. I was like, are they sure they're playing the in this team? <laughs> <laughs> Do they know they're here? <laughs> I swear, I was like, no, oh, man, that's not, something's not right here. Trust me, on the pitch, and I saw these amassies players, and it's funny that guy just took them, he looked at me, he said, Canners, and it's because of you, well, we got them. Wow. You started this. Wow. <coughs> so, um, that was nice when he told me that, so, but, um, going down at half time, he was like, got me like 15 minutes before took me down and it's like shit <laughs> by the tunnel and I'm like you know oh my god and Neil Barney yes this player he won he broke barriers and I went oh, man, this is an introduction <laughs> <laughs> and he's known for you know in the game he played against Sheffield Wednesday and I was like oh my god what's wrong with this <laughs> <laughs> just get me on the go <laughs> And you know, as you know, Sheffield Wednesday too, and for all, and this person, poor Canada, and yeah. they start, oh shit. So now, I only want to get on. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wave, 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 <laughs> turn, turn around, Dip and up. come back out. <laughs> yeah. So Neil just says, yeah, let's go around. I went, go around where? <laughs> he said, no, walk around. I said, are you walking around? 
And he's got me to walk all wow. the way, man. I went past the east. Um, the amount, um, what is it? Oh, God. Innovation, standing innovation. Everything yeah. from Matthew Hardy to the week. Everybody Incredible. stood up. And um, sure, I, I had tears in my eyes. Um, nobody might have noticed, but I did. Because um, mm. I was really emotionally touched. It's like a full circle moment, isn't it? Oh, it, it returning back. Yeah. Obviously, i have understanding of what happened and mm-hmm. to be welcome like that. Yeah. It was and you've been really. through such a journey oh, at that man. point as well. Total. It was, yeah, that was enough. That was it. Yeah. To be honest. Um, had that had that closed one of the biggest chapters of your life, mm. do you feel that? Day? I think, yeah. If, it it, if it could it close chapters and open a new one. Yeah. If, uh, if you say, because I was scared more or less to come back because of what was happening, yeah. that was, that was a fear. And that just eased it off. And I think things that what happened after that, Canners, we want you to the in the foundation to talk. And I went, okay. And then next thing, so Canners, we want you to do your documentary, I mean, autobiography. And I went, mm-hmm. what? Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. And I was like, oh, that's no, 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 no. And what I was concerned about was obviously my mum because she played a, more, a part in it. And for me, yeah. Yeah. she had to be mentioned. I had to explain the whole of my circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to get permission. And it was always frightening to ask her. I'd, I'd ask my sister, go and ask her for me. So, and she said yes. And it was like, wow. Dick the phone couldn't stop her. I remembered everything from me. If I wow. Was, uh, wow. So that came out. And, um, well. Like and said, and just, just to pay a dividends, it, it won. Uh, it was it was mm. the best autobiography in the National Sporting Club's 2009 Book Awards. Yeah. And best autobiography in... Uh, yeah, the same one. <laughs> it, was, it did. Yeah. Um, it did bloody well. It's well, <laughs> done well, man. This, this that was the help of Rick, Cla- um, Rick Glanville. He's historian at Chelsea, if you yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah. And Rick played a part. But what I think what major turned out, because for me, I, I wanted to book exactly explain how I'm talking to you. Yeah. You see how I'm talking to you? That's how I wanted it written. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't use fancy words. Don't go by that. Yeah, yeah. You want yeah. the realness, innit? I want the realness. It's authentic. Yeah, yeah. So when he turned it, I think that's why people related it yeah yeah and it came out and I had people phoning me up at two in the morning Canners man I'm in the bath <laughs> <laughs> what, what? I'm trying to read this chapter <laughs> and I said I'm going to put it down after the chapter but I don't know what was happening so I went through the chapter and I'm going through hell the next thing what what's going on I said bruv finish, finish your bath <laughs> he'll finish the bath put yeah, the book down yeah. and finish the bath <laughs> man and trust me I was getting called like that I was like what <laughs> you think I'm joking I've not even read my book or no even to this way. day you know when you've Tell it, isn't it? You've told the man to write it down, but yeah. I've not gone over it up to this very day. Still not gone over it. Will you ever? You would mind. I don't know. Because it can help, I suppose, when I'm going to school. But because I know it in my head. It's like you don't, I don't need, need to, to go. Yeah. But it You've can it. Res- it can, what's the word when you read something again? It kind of, kind of, oh God, that's what I come for it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> come to me. But um, yeah, it has opened, it did open a lot of doors. Yeah. Well, like that book I've been travelling all over it's the place it's an amazing title Black and so Blue Black yes and Blue, man. yeah wow. that was an, a title um, that we we used and I think it went down well with the publishers but yeah. Rick played a part in that he played a part mm-hmm. in a lot of things you know what I mean so how he done it and put it out so how I'm happy you, how did you feel before it was released because obviously it's your story and I know you mentioned not wanting to like tell everyone about your life and so how was how did it you was feel when it got now it was now realizing that phew, people could read my life, mm. so there's no hiding it. Yeah. So when now I could talk about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's there in the book. It's not a lie. Yeah. So when I talk, I felt quite eased about it, and I said, "You what? Yeah, I did." And how did you feel? I didn't feel the good at all about it. And this is what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. It's what you choose and how you choose it. Where do you go from in your life? Mm. So there's uh, so much I can talk about. Um, like we said earlier, mm-hmm. uh, and. It, it's quite easy to come out. I mean, I'm not just talking to 10 people. I've talked to 100. I've talked to 500 yeah. people. Yeah, man. And don't get me wrong, it's still like when I play football, like I get nervous until yeah. I start in the game. And that's how it is for me when I'm talking. Yeah. Like yeah. I've got so much, I just don't have enough time. time yeah. And that's oh, what it is. I was have we got enough time now? Have mm. we got enough? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was saying earlier, I was saying earlier that I'm still amazed no one's made a film about it yet. Honestly, man. You know what? I've been hearing so many people say, oh, this is a film. We've got to make a film. We've got to make a film. I was excited at the first time. Don't get my film. Oh, my God. 
I'm not excited no more. Really? Yeah. There's too many people saying, yeah, it's your man. You know what I mean? So the hype's gone now, isn't it? I think, yeah, yeah, I just think what it does with people, I think now I hold Q&As. Um, yeah, that's yeah. nice. And like, I've got, um, uh, well, it's a Black History Month. It's stung him on. Yeah. It's so privileged to be called in Black History Month. And if, like they say, like you mentioned, legend or whatever, yeah. break, made a breakthrough, um, what they say, um, for me, I, I wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't have called myself a legend. Mm. I'm not gonna lie to you. I, I don't relate with myself a legend. Yes, I relate to being a professional, wanting to be. Um, but what I had to go through to break mm-hmm. little barriers, yes. And what I went through, I didn't run. Mm. I stayed. Yeah. Um, and those are out there because I can see, I've heard when fans said, "Paul, oh, man." When I saw you taking all that race, I left. I couldn't support Chelsea. And I said, yeah, but I saw many that this was aimed at. But they stayed there, bruv. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. care. They stayed there because they wanted to support this club and none of them is going to throw them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So when you say that, I'm not saying you're weak, but you could have stayed, bro. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? So this is where we are now. Um, yeah. It's diverse, uh, multicultural now, the club. Yeah, Trust me. You've got people wearing a shirt from all over the world. And come Facts. down to Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. You're amazing, then it when we did a tour there, the amount of people from different countries mm. that said, oh, that was my first time. I've had to come here. Who oh. do you support? Oh Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> and you come yeah, all man. the way from coming there. I'll just it opens it's my a brand eyes. Now, yeah. isn't yeah. It? It's yeah. Yeah. Huge brand. That's the big where you go. There you go, my friend. I would just before we wrap up, I I I I wanna say, um from what you've been through and anyone else who's listening right now, if they're going through anything similar, yeah, and and they've been pushed to the limit, and and maybe they're you know they're they're facing a wall, and it seems like there's no hope. What yeah. do you say to those people? There's always hope. Um, it's, you don't have to seek hard, but you have to say something. Yeah, you have to. Don't let. Don't think that people can notice. Mm-hmm. Or people are aware that something's wrong with you, because they might not approach you. Yeah, and that was thing because people looked at me and said they thought I was hard, but thought you was too difficult to approach. We thought you was angry, mm. and I wasn't angry, but my face just showed that. Yeah, you didn't want to show that. You know what I mean? It wasn't. Yeah. Really, it just show, It was just showed like it was yeah. unapproachable. Yeah. but I wanted people to talk yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah But yeah, they yeah. said it was my face, and I was like, "What was it?" Yeah, but now talking to you, oh my god, you're the play. It's <laughs> great to talk to you. Yeah, you should have said something. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. But exactly, yeah. So yeah. don't be frightened to talk to someone. I'm serious to God. Do not let things build up and hold up inside. It's the most worst disease that mental health, it's it's a, it's a disease, bro. Yeah. yeah it, it can eat you up. Yeah, and when it eats you up, it doesn't take any prisoners. I've seen people and they tell me what they've gone through and what they've done and I was like, I've been blessed that I didn't get that far yeah. because I maybe opened up and didn't stank. In times I stayed inside, yeah. I wouldn't go out in the yeah, because yeah, I didn't want to see nobody. Yeah, I come out my door, I played like I weren't in. Yeah, me, I'm not frightening nobody to do that. Mm. Yeah, don't do it. Trust me, open up, man. There's so much help out there. I don't care. You don't find an excuse because we do that as well. Yeah. Oh, I'll do it next week. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah, don't find it. Just push yourself. Go. And then see where you go from yep. there. Yeah, man. Or just, you know what I mean? Do it today. Call up on somebody. Somebody knows. Yeah, man. Call them up and talk to them. It's cool. Paul, Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure to sit with you. so you. inspirational, man. It's, it's unreal. Cool. It's unreal, man. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for coming on the show, man. Next really time, yeah, boy. Bring <laughs> some food. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Paul. Now, that's a wrap. It's the Bev and who? <laughs> They're wrapped. He's locked off. He's locked <laughs> wait, off. wait, wait. Is there anything you want to promote? Your yeah, book, yeah, your yeah. foundation, your social handles? You know what? Black and blue. The thing about um, foundation, it's all about f- um, funds and support. Yeah. 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 It's, it's it's not easy. You People think that you can just open a foundation and think you're receiving funds. It's not. Yeah. And we got programs and it's the help from the public and so forth. Any yeah. businessman, if they love to help me, trust me, get in touch. It's, oh God, it's P Cannival, P with Cannival, no dots, just Cannival at yahoo.com. Um, please get in touch. And yeah. if you provide you know, some assistant, 
we'll take that because I've got so many. We got so many kids we work with. Yeah, I try yeah, to yeah. get Chelsea involved, and in you know what I mean, and so forth. Yeah. But there's so many avenues that we want to do and so forth get to, but it's difficult because the lack of funds. Yep. Yeah, and your Instagram, Twitter, Instagram is King Can No the Canners Way. Instagram no yeah the King Instagram is the Canners Way. Yeah, and it's the Twitter. This is King Canners, and then I think the oh god Facebook. Facebook. That's yeah. King Canners, isn't it? P K Canners or whatever. You can't miss me. <laughs> you don't see in there. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. We're all in that. Um, but watch us. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. we just will bear with us. What we do. We, we we will put all your links, your foundation, and social links in the yeah. description. So, yeah. guys, definitely please please know, check it out. Donate, support, yeah, man. and um, and pause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Guys, cheers. Ciao.